Yes, yes sir, Bobby. can you hear me? I can Are hear you. you. Yeah, not too bad. Do you want to just turn your phone maybe sideways? I think um, that should then. There we are. Perfect. Hi. All right. How's things? Not too bad. Not too bad. Good to finally meet you. Um, I know we've been messaging back and forth there. So um, finally putting a face now to the Instagram profile. Exactly. Hey, geez. No, it was great to get the message through. Hey, delighted, delighted to be on here. So um, I tuned into the last two podcasts and the two lads have great stories. So don't know if I'll be chatting about Delacy Yan Sommer and Terstegan now, but we'll give her, uh, give her a go. I know we'll see over like. Yeah, you might you might say you can drop a, a name or two as well. So um uh, maybe an li- odd one now. Listen, uh I suppose we'll I'll give you a bit of an introduction um from what I know about you and then I'll let you kinda um maybe clear up one or two things or add to that. So um folks, uh we're joined today by Patty McGarvey, um former Irish uh underage international goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. Uh, former Finn Harps uh, goalkeeper and as of recently was with Dergview. Um, so I think I've covered all that I know about you. Is there anything, Paddy, maybe you want to elaborate on any of that? No, geez, that, that's, that sounds pretty good now. So that's that's not a bad answer. I'll take that now. That's, You'll that's take good. that. So, yeah. so um, you've, you basically started off, you're, are you from Dunlow, is it? From Dunlow, eh? so started off at Dunlow Town. Um, usually you start off when you're about four or five, just playing football, like. And it was with Pat Ward. He would have been the manager, his cousin of mine. He's he managed Dunlow Town, so we had a, we had a, we had our own team. And then it was about under twelves. Then that team disbanded, and most of the lads went to Kiju, but I was with uh letter I was kind of like a letter county district select team. And we went to the Foil Cup and there was a fella from Kilmack called Hugo McDade. He was managing that team. So at when Dundo disbanded, Hugo rang me because they didn't have a goalkeeper and he just said, Listen, would you want to would you want to come to Kilmack? Went to Kilmack then and ended up we won I think we won two leagues and maybe a Champions League and that. So we had a good team. We had Stephen Black and Connor Black, who was what what they argue this season as well. We had likes of Carlos O'Reilly and Jimmy Grant to Play, ended up playing Gaelic now, but we had, a, we had a really good team, like, and then played there until it was under 14s. Played with Donegal School Boys as well, under 14, from 12s to 14s, and then the League of Ireland came in then for Harps under 15 levels, so Kevin McHugh managed that, and then was lucky enough to get out. I was signed a year young up there, so um, it was great great to get up to Harps. I was, it was a really good standard at the time. I remember doing trials for must have been about six months. Like we were doing trials down in Ballyar and we were in uh, we we're all over the place. We were in Carndonna some days and we were in Fun Valley and places like and kinda that was that was where everyone wanted to be. It was at the, the under fifteen level at the at the League of Ireland because that's the first year it came in. Um but no, it was, it was it was great. It was a really good standard high in Kevin. He was he was he was a great coach who he was like. Um yeah. who's Guy Crossing was with him and it really Really, can I really brought you on, like being in that environment, like, and then was lucky enough then to get pushed on up to up the age groups and stuff. Um, but no, it was it was good to get the under fifteens of Harps. So it was kind of like the first step along the ladder. Um, you had your emerging talent. You'd only go school boys team before that, and I suppose traveling from Dunlow, like you were nearly out every night of the week. So you were like between emerging talent and Kilmack, and when you had the trials for Harps and the only go school boys and stuff, like it was out every night of the week, like, but. I was lucky that uh, I had a dad who took me everywhere, so I did like so. Yeah. And I had a family at home and that as well. They were brilliant, like, because you kind know, of whenever you're training, you're nearly based and whatever time training starts at, you're nearly away an hour beforehand and you're being an hour home, like, so 34 or five hours every evening, like, so it was, um, it was great at the time. It was great to look back on it, like, but definitely wouldn't have been able to do it without, uh, without all the trucking about, like. Yeah, no, listen, I think that's something, um, you know, you have soccer is, I suppose, within the county. Um, it's predominantly based within the Letter Kenny area, uh, yeah. or at least the East Donegal area as well, with regards to Balbuffet and the surrounding area. So I think, um, you know, I would have grown up playing with a lot of boys, sort of from um Glen A, Gidor, uh, Dunlow as well. And I suppose people don't maybe appreciate that there is quite a bit of traveling. Um you know, required uh for football 
um, within the county. And, you know, um, it, it's, it's obviously important. You were saying there about your family um, being very supportive of that. But, Pat, I just want to take you back there now because um, I know it was probably about seven, maybe about seven, eight years ago I was working. I did a few sessions with the Finn Harps Academies um, with goalkeeping. Um, and I was speaking to Liam Porter from Rafo, and he was a name that uh, your your name came up in conversation. He said you were one to look out for, and you were kind of, I suppose, at that stage getting ready to go up for um, Ireland trials, or you were sort of at that emerging talent level. And he says, you know, you you were the one that had a great attitude, um, really open to learning, um, and sort of had, you know, he was one that he thought, or you were one that he thought um, had great potential. Why don't we just go back a little bit, though, too, I suppose, um, when you were starting off, um, what sort of made you become a goalkeeper? What sort of was that first inspiration? I well, we probably didn't want to run too much now, hey, so I, uh, when I was younger now. I was always handy about playing about outside and that, but now my brother was a goalkeeper, so he was when he was younger. Um and my uncle was a goalkeeper too, like so obviously like not not a wild not a wild high level, just club level at home, like but it was when you're just you're out watching your brother and he's playing the nets, like obviously you want to play in nets too. Um but I don't know what it is about from from down here, that's kinda of part of the world. Like there always seems to be decent goalkeepers around here, like. Um so we just kinda of ended up being the nets, was always out in the lawn. And we we, we I kinda of live on a it's like a wee hull we live on. There's about it was about ten or twelve houses, like, and every day we would have been out in the lawn, all of us, like, just out playing football. And I suppose I was maybe with the older lads and that, and they just would have end up taking. I would have went to nets and just would have took shots and me and stuff. And it started off so simple like that, and then playing the nets for Dunno. And to be honest, like, kind of was playing Gaelic as well at the same time when I was younger, like, and I could have kind of took or leave leave football, like, it wasn't really mm. maybe all and end all at that time, like, and I was on. The letter can either strike or the northwest team, so the, the league was split into four sections at that stage. So it was like lads from would have been done low, KG, Glen A, Gidor. And we were on trials for the Nigel School Boys team in under 12s. That would have been the team that Liam Porter managed. Like, and we played, so you would have played each section once. And I remember playing in, in Lakeview and Letter Kenny. And the two trials before that had gone all right, didn't, didn't really bother me too much. but that day in Lakeview in particular just happened to have a really good day like just one of them days where you're saving everything like and they took four keepers for the schoolboys team um and to be honest was probably quite lucky to make that team because mm. usually they only ever take two or three so I kind of found out later on then that Finbar had seen me training what the under 13 Gaelic team I think it was out doing stuff with goalkeepers in the pitch and he says that he's seen something in me that night he was in Super Value shopping and the pitch, the Gaelic pitch is right beside Supervale. And he says that he's seen me training. And he says there was something that he's seen in me that said, yeah, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take him up. Like, So it's funny too, like how if you don't get that first step in the ladder, like like you might not end up playing at any level at all. You could have just ended up playing for Dunlow and playing for KG. Um, and you might never have made it to Harps level at all. Like, um, That's it, yeah. There, yeah, it's just funny. Like, I didn't, I didn't know that until... I met Finn by then and Finn, and Finn Park. I was, did, did the warm up of the seniors, and then I was in the stand, and he was telling me the crack. Like, and I was like, he's just funny too. Like, and there was a fellow called Peter McHugh as well, and he was he was managing down low too, and he pushed away at me big time as well. Um, and then from that, he made the schoolboys team. And we played the interleague, obviously, against Sligo Leach, and and Cavan and Ashon and everything. Um, the second year we, we we did quite well. We got to the we got to the final. We got beat by DDSL in the final. Um, the first year we got put out in the group stage. I think Sligo beat us. They went on. I think actually won the competition that year. And then under fourteens, then we, I didn't actually get to go to the Kennedy Cup. Um, right. I was it was on the team up until I think it was maybe February March time, and it was around the time of the Harps trials as well. So. There was a friendly tournament out in Derry, and I I had played in that tournament for Harps, um, and it was myself and Adam Murphy as well, and we played for Harps in that tournament, like, and then we just we just weren't allowed to go to the Candy Cup. Then it was, it was a strange one or whatever, but, um, so like you funny like the things you hear like Seamus Coleman never got to go to the Candy mm. Cup. Like, it's funny like so every 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 player's their own story like and 
I remember the week of the Kennedy Cup, especially like, um, geez, it was oh, it was nice sitting at home like so it was. Cause that's kind of the be all and end all underage football when you're when you're that age. Like, I remember going down. My dad took me down on like the maybe the fourth day or the fifth day, and we stayed me watch the final and that. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was it's, it's funny. Like every every player's their own story. Like, but yeah. It's just, if if you don't make that first step on the ladder, maybe the schoolboys or whatever, sometimes you can get lost and you can get, I suppose maybe maybe forgotten about maybe that 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 want to kind of kick on mightn't be there, whereas like I did make the schoolboys team and then the more training that I got, it just got better and better. And I suppose maybe when you're not the best at twelves and thirteens, maybe it pushes you on to train more and stuff. Oh um, yeah, and definitely under thirteens, under fourteens, then started kind of like taking football a lot more seriously, like and. You were nearly out every night of the week anyway. When you're you'd be, you'd be playing Gaelic and then you'd be playing football, and you were training every night of the week. Like so, obviously you're 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 going to get better. Like, um, and then at under fourteens, then, like your your week was pretty stacked. You had had the the emerging talent on a Monday night. You would have had Donegal School of Boys on a Tuesday. You would have had Harps Trials on a Wednesday, and then you would have had possibly. I was on trial in the Derry as well at the time. Because I didn't know if I would make harps, I wanted yeah. wanted to play League of Ireland at some level. Like, um, it was at Derry, and then you'd be off on a Friday, and you'd have a game for Kilmac Saturday, and you could have schoolboys training on a Sunday morning. Like, so you were yeah. literally a full you're a full time footballer at fourteen. Like, yeah, it's uh, a lot. Obviously, of obviously, without without any without any money or anything now, but um, and then obviously the factor and all the traveling that as well. Like, so. Very lucky that dad was able to to take me to all that training and we car shared as well. There's a boy from from Glenty as well, Diane Nicol Day and Fan and Coyle from Gidor, like and that was kind of we were kind of the three I suppose West lads as they would have called us like. Mm. And we kinda of travelled together and stuff. We would have met either down in Gidor, we would have met in Funtown, kinda of, ca- carried on the training that way. But um you definitely like the more the more training that you get. Uh, the the better I got, like, and I suppose I would have had a good attitude back then. To be fair, as well, like, and it's something you try and I'm helping out a minor team now in the club, but what done low, like, and just trying to drill that attitude of, like, when you train hard, you get the rewards and stuff, and like, absolutely, definitely. I did, I wasn't the fellow with the most ability, like, but in fairness, like, you could probably, I could definitely say, like, I probably outworked some other keepers that were definitely better than me, like. So, yeah. Um, it's just more about your attitude and everything, like that'll get you. That'll get you the furthest, like, because I even I, see lads that was on my Ireland 15s team, like, that are that, that even didn't make it at 15s, hey, and some of them are in the 21s in the senior team now, like, like, mm. like so that's Sinclair Armstrong, he wasn't on the, the 15s set up really, he was on trials and stuff, but he never got picked, and then he got his made a senior and senior debut there a couple of months ago. So it's not really about how good you are, maybe 14s, 15s, it's more kind of about if you keep that attitude and you keep knuckling down, it's more about how good you are at 19, 20 year old when you're ready to maybe step into a senior setup or whatever. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think what you give a really good overview there is the dedication that's required, yeah. even at that young age. It's not necessarily, you know, obviously you're doing it for the love of it, for the fun, but there is a lot of discipline, dedication re- uh, required. Um, and hopefully that gives the listeners an overview of. You know what it essentially takes and um you know you as you said you've sort of outlaid you've had a couple of real setbacks there i think the candy cup one um maybe the candy cup doesn't carry as much weight as it did but i suppose a few years ago that was as you said the be all end all of football yeah. um underage tournaments to sort of come back show up of resilience um i suppose it's testament then you really kicked on um you you've obviously dropped your first name there, um, Sinclair Armstrong. Why don't you uh, talk about there? Um, you know, you were saying you got into school, boys. You're up at Harps. Um, things are starting to motor along very quickly for a young Paddy McGarvey. At what stage then? You know, did the Ireland call ups come? Did you start to realise? You know what? I have a bit of a chance here. Um, at getting some international or mm-hmm. national rather recognition. Um, yeah, no, good question. It was it was always in the emerging town. From there was a few lads that started off in it, and then me and a few other lads kind of on our performances were done. all came into it then under thirteens, and then you would have trained whenever the school was off. But then me, I, I was picked then to be with the older age group on a Monday night, so it was like a regional block. So yeah. I kind of figured that, and I was like, "Geez, that's that's that that's quite good." 
But um, I remember one summer we were up in Dublin training every Sunday morning. It was like a goalkeeping assessment kind of thing for the summer. And we were up every every second Sunday morning. And looking back on it now, it was crazy. Like, the, yeah. the traveling that was involved, like, you kind of took it for granted at the time. Like, you thought this was the norm. Um, but we would have been up in Dublin every second Sunday morning. And I suppose weeks are going on and you're, you're kind of seeing the groups that you're in. And the first couple of weeks, it was kind of all everyone was in through everyone. And then I remember doing goalkeeper wars. We always would have finished off with goalie wars in the last, and, and the very last Sunday morning, I was up against, I suppose, the two other best lads from Dublin at the time. Like, And you're kind of thinking to yourself, you know what, there's a lot of people watching here. There's kind of, you just, you, you just kind of know yourself. You get that feeling, obviously, as a player. You kind of know when there's a wee bit riding on it or whatever. And then, got a shout, there was, the goalkeepers were cut down. I think we started off with about 40 goalkeepers, like, and it was cut down in October time. And I was never, we would always have trained and then played a game. But there were some weeks where I wasn't even playing a game. I was just training, like, so I didn't really know if it was a good thing or a bad thing. But looking back at it now, it was obviously good. And I kept getting cut. And I kept getting cut. And then once the Ireland trials came, I would only really have played a half an hour in some matches. Like, and mm-hmm. funny, I would always have worn number one jersey. So I kind of figured, you know what, there could be something here, all right. Um, and the trials were, were whittled down to five keepers. Um, and we played friendlies. And you kind of know yourself, the lads from Dublin, who, who are, I suppose, the best lads from Dublin. I would always have played in the teams with them in the trials and stuff. I would always have done quite well. Um, so then there was what whittled down four keepers. So it was me and a fella from Cork. He's playing with Cove now. Dara Burke, he's the, he's the first team keeper at Cove. And then Keen Moore, who's with UCD. And then Josh Keeley, who's he was in the air. He's the Ireland 21's keeper at the moment. He's playing with Barnet, I think, maybe in league in the National League or League Two. National League, yeah. Uh, yeah. He, uh, it was the four of us. And then it was kind of coming towards that first international against Poland. And... I think there might have been a training camp maybe two weeks beforehand. But we done we done all the trials and stuff and kinda of left it all, kinda of just done done my best as good as I could. And and I remember we played a friendly against I think it might have been St. Kevin's under fifteens team at the time. And the full Monty was on outfield and I was the keeper. So yeah. I was like, Right, you know what? This is this this is good for me here. Done quite well in the game. And then the email came through then to say you were picked. But I suppose with goalkeepers as well, there's wee things you could pick up on. Like like when I was in the squad, I was always the first name down. And the, the mm. other goalkeepers would have been underneath me. So I kind of was in my head, right, I'm number one here. Like, And we played Man City in a friendly and done quite well. And then the first friendly then against Poland started. Um, saved the penalty as well in the first game. We got beat 2-0 now, but it was it was, it was was class. Like just yeah. make your debuts, kind of come from under 12s, 13s, 14s, and then kind of cap it off at the 15s then. Um, that was that that was class. Like, and we were, we, we play we played Cyprus then, and there was a keeper from England came in then. So, the kind of the granny rule or whatever came in then. Okay, so yeah. It was, was number one, and then it was just me and the English keeper for the rest of the under fifteen season. A fellow called Dan Rose, he signed for Sharka there in Germany. I think about two maybe two or three years ago. Okay, I think he's out yeah. playing, playing in the states now, and he came in. It was between me and him for being number one for the rest of the fifteen season, um. But you did you kind of know yourself at the, during the trials and stuff like if you're in with maybe the good goalkeepers like maybe you're 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 well up in the pecking order, um. I suppose maybe you don't want to you don't want to like look too much into things and that like at the time, but um definitely looking back at it now you could see the wee hints about stuff that maybe you weren't playing a game and you were training instead that they had seen you in matches or they knew what you were about or whatever. Um, so maybe you you didn't need to play too much, but then I I was I was wasn't in the team really at all at sixteens. I was in a few training camps and stuff. A new manager came out. Well, he was the manager of the sixteens. Uh, was Paulo Sam, and was on standby a few times, but never got capped at sixteens. And then seventeens, then I was on standby again, but one of the keepers got sick the week of the Euros qualifiers mm-hmm. down in Cork. So I remember training on a Sunday. And I had about four missed calls from dad when I got back into the car. And he, yeah. I was kind of like, geez, what, what, what happened here? What's wrong? And uh, I rang him and he says, just you need to go to Cork. And sometimes when you're on standby and when it's coming, I think there's maybe two matches left. 
and you kind of didn't think too much about it. You kind of like had left it in the back of your mind. Obviously, I'm standby, but you never really think you're going to get a shout. And I says, I says, what's on in Cork? He says the qualifiers. I says, oh, like shout, I said, I no problem. Like, yeah. I travel down, and then I ended up getting a cap at that age at under 17s, um, which which was great. And then kind of COVID came in then that year, the 20 it was 2019, 2020. So it would have been March 2020. COVID came in. And at the time, I was with the Irish schools team as well at under 18. So I was in that a year young, which was class. Like all, all, Ollie Horgan, he was, he was the Harps. He was the assistant. And William O'Connor was the manager. Um, I was in that a year young. And the week before, we were meant to play our first game in Scotland. The COVID came in and then everything was shut down. So for me, that was like, you know what, I was starting to get back into an Irish team again. I was in around the 17s team. Was I was in the 17 Euro squad. Wasn't picked first, but got into it was up at training camps and stuff and then was meant to play against Scotland and then the whole thing was shut down and we ended up actually that centenary shield season didn't happen and the season after didn't happen as well so I must maybe two years of that there so you're looking at that yeah. and you're like Jesus you know you, you have no luck at all Um, but we had, we had a really good team that first year I remember we played played UCD's first team we beat them 2-0 very handily like yeah. so we, no, we, we, we had a, it's good, a good side, side then. Just, there's a lot of them lads now who went on to play Kyle Robinson moved to Scotland. He's playing with a team in Scotland, maybe our broke or someone like that. Um, Andy Quinn, the centre half, he's playing with Drahada. Um, there's a lot of lads that played for Wexford. Like it was, it was, it was, it was a good size, so it was. Yeah. Um, and after after COVID, then hey, I didn't really wasn't really around the Irish team as much. Hey, and it was more just being at home, and I was at Harps and that. But I was with the seniors, so I was happy enough at that stage. Like yeah. Well, there you go. I think, you know, from someone who's, I think we followed each other for a while on Instagram and sort of yeah. keeping tabs on you. I think we, we always seem to see the tip of the iceberg. We always think that progression's linear. I knew you were sort of, to me, it looked like you were uh, always kicking on, kicking on, kicking on, but you've obviously had to battle a few setbacks there. Yeah. Um. So that's really, I think that should be beneficial from for the listeners um, to see that, you know, you have had those setbacks along the way. And when people are on, you know, and aspiring and pursuing um, something like football or any other dream, there are going to be those setbacks. So um, talking about setbacks, um, we spoke about this a wee bit, just through messages. Yeah. Um, you kind of moved through, you were playing with Harp, well, you're involved anyways with Harp Seniors. You made the move to Derg View, um, just across the border there in Castle Derg. Um, you played one season, one full season. Would I be right in saying that? Played a half a season and then played one full season last year. Yeah. Okay, and then you've got the dreaded injury, the one that every footballer, uh, you know, yeah. fears. Uh, those three letters, the the ACL. Do you want to maybe just talk us through that? I know we spoke about. I've done my ACL as well, but maybe because um. I don't know. I always think it's not a common injury for goalkeepers or associated with goalkeepers. But no, definitely not. No. Do you want to just talk about? Because I think it's important. Um, and for anyone who hasn't had that injury, it's a it's a really really tough experience. Um, do you want to maybe just go into that? And uh, I'd be interested to hear your experience and sort of compare it there to mine. Yeah, no problems. Um, so I'll just take you back. So it was at Harps. And then the manager of the 19s team at the time was Tommy Canning. Mm. And he went to Derry's you in June, July 2021. Um, I suppose before that, and you're talking about injuries as well. When I had signed for Harps, signed the contract at, in the 2020 December time. So it would have been the 2021 pre-season. And the first session was in Finn Valley. I was grand on the session for the night, first day of pre-season. The second night, we were doing a shooting drill. And I remember just save one or two shots, and then it's kind of balls could went in the top corner, and I've kind of tipped it, o- tipped it over like, but I've come down, I've landed on my hand, and I've broke mm-hmm. a bone in my hand, and it's like the second night in, and I was out for about ten weeks. Um, so when you're chatting there about momentum, I'll come back to it in a wee second. Yeah. But like you're after signing the contract, you're doing really well the year before. You kind of thinking these things are an upward trajectory for me again, like, and you get injured, and in fairness, like you, you work hard obviously when you're injured and stuff. Um, but that was that was another setback there. Like there's there, but there's, there's yeah, a yeah. setback now between getting maybe not getting picked for teams and things not working out for you and stuff. 
um, and then went through, came back from the injury, was back training, and then the week of the 19 season, I was meant to play 19s that year, and I ended up dead. But the the week of that uh that season started, remember training from Valley, just doing a small side of game high, and just kind of came out someone's feet, and they've kicked me hand, and broke my finger, I'm out for another four or five weeks, like. So I suppose I'm lucky that way. Um, I ended up coming back and playing, but Tommy was a manager in the 19s, and he went to Derryview, and then he kind of. He approached me then, and the, I always would have been back and forth with him anyway, texting him and stuff. And then he came, he approached me then in December, January, uh, asking if I want to come on loan for so six months or so, get get a few games under my belt, senior football. Um, ended up going out and uh, played about 10 matches at the kind of turning towards the end of the season. Um, and then played a full season last year. I ended up getting player of the year last year. So, like, had a really good season personally, like. Um and then you're kind of looking to bring that into this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, decent pre had a decent preseason. Though we lost the first two matches, was kind of done all right, and we were playing up in the Welders up in Belfast. Um, we were going quite well at the time, and we were two each in the match, and we ended up winning the game three two. But I just remember coming and punching the ball. Just a corner happens every every time. Like just came and punched it. Um, I don't punch it clear now. Yeah. Time, but I came and punched it anyway. Um and I remember just landing on my knee, it was a left knee, and just feeling a pop and a crack. Mm-hmm. And just remember, remember feeling it was really uncomfortable, like and I went down. Um, but the ball's gone out and the ball's come back in. So I've kind of like kind of got up and kind of half the jog back into the net. Like and it's a good job it wasn't on target because there would have been no chance of me saving yeah. it. Like and the ball was cleared. Um and I went down. And at the time, I didn't, I didn't think too much of it. I just thought maybe just it popped in and out of place or something. Okay. Um, I didn't really think there was a wild pile to it, because at the time I was playing, playing a bit of Gaelic as well. Because the main goalkeeper with them, though, he was in Australia last year, um, and they were stuck for a keeper one day. So I went and asked for the seniors, and then ended up keeping my spot. So it was meant to come back and play Gaelic that evening as well, um, in Mulford in the championship. And in the back of my head, I was kind of thinking, right, I I can't be injured here, like like this yeah, this, yeah. This, this can't happen, like. Um, so I ended up going down. The physio came over, like, and Keith Cowan was there as well. He actually tore both his cruciates as well. He was That's right, for yeah. the time, like. So he came over and he was a good lad, like, and he was kind of saying, "You should be all right, you be all right." He says, "Just try and see see what you like when you stand up." And I stood up and swear to God, there was no problem at all. Could could stand up, no bother. But I wanted to take a step in it, hey, and the whole knee collapsed inwards. Oh. And that's when I, that's when I was like, oh no, I'm in, I'm in bother here. Like. Yeah. So then, just I kind of looked at the physio, like, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm gone, like. So yeah. kind of hobble, half hobbled off the pitch. I don't know. There must have been a voodoo doll over that day, hey, because in the first yeah. half as well, there was, there was a lad who tore his cruciate and his PCL, playing for us as well in the first half of the game. So there was no stretcher. Mm-hmm. Um. So I walked off, and then Stephen Black as well. He broke his collarbone in the same game. So that's three, yes, three, three pretty long term three yeah. pretty long term injuries in that game. Um I remember I remember just sitting in the changing room like uh, after I kind of during when the game was on, the physio was there like and it's kinda of, kind of just a sick feeling you get because you don't know what's happened. Yeah. You know there's something there you know there's something not right. And like looking back on it now, I suppose I was pretty naive, kind of thinking, oh, I'll be grand, I'll be grand but the knee blew up like a balloon, so it did. Yeah. Um I suppose the first kind of protocol was to go to A and E and went to A and E, and this this is this is a this is a weird one like so went to A and E and was in the place anyway and had to get an MRI but wasn't wasn't using the MRI machine in, in the hospital but got an X ray and there was nothing broke or that but see the knee sliding test that you see a lot of physios and mm-hmm. that do my knee was still intact I do I don't know how it doesn't really yeah. make sense like but. When I was leaving the hospital, I was obviously given crutches and I was given um not a boot, but um the a knee brace. was put in a brace out, knee was yeah. put into a brace. Um and written on the sheet was no ligament damage. a uh, few weeks, maybe to rest and rest and heal. And I had a video of the of the injury, showing it about the physios and stuff. And they didn't really want to say anything just in, just until we get the MRI back. Yeah. And got the MRI over in a fitty in Letter County. And then it was in the Scally place for like obviously once you go to A and E you have to come back for a checkup. Um came back to the Scally place. And I, I just remember it kind of sticks out in my mind the day before. I remember thinking like like if this is something serious here, like 
can't really set about and just kind of feel sorry for yourself. You kind of have to get get out and get training and get whatever you need done. Like, um, not thinking that it was an ACL at all. Uh, and then I went in and the doctor looked at us in the scally place and he says, geez, I have an idea of what's going on here. He thought maybe it was a meniscus or an MCL or something small like yeah. that. It's relatively short term, 10, 12 weeks. Um, and the they got the reading of the, the MRI and the first thing he says was you have a lateral tear in your meniscus and I'm mm-hmm. like happy days that's grand I'm just like I've got away with this one happy days eh? no problem I can deal with that and then the next thing he says but your anterior cruciate ligament is completely torn like and I was kind of like would you not tell me that first sir like, I, know, geez, yeah. Yeah, but I was like geez but I just you get, get just that sick uh, you just get that sick feeling like and I remember sitting there, like, and he, he kept talking and stuff. But to be honest, I was zoned out. Like, I don't remember what he said. Um, and Steve, Stephen was in that day as well, uh, in the Scally place, like, and and I remember when he came out, like, he just didn't even want to talk to anyone. Just put the head down and just just went out in the crutches, like. Yeah. And we we're on we we're on the way home, and uh, just trying to get an appointment for Sanjay. And my dad was great, like, he was on the physios and that straight away, like, and was 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 sorted pr- relatively quick, like, and. Went up to went up to Santry to meet Cahill Moore. Um and it was in a brace for two weeks. So I suppose they kinda of lost a lot of muscle. Not that there was mm. a wild pile of muscle at the time in it now anyway, but yeah, um, you there's a lot of atrophy your... comes, yeah. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Like That's even scary. after two weeks. Like, yeah. Like two weeks, I suppose, of it being in a brace and stuff. And funny, like if I was to do it again, I definitely would try and nearly even stay away from a brace and try and go walking on as quick as I could. Yeah, absolutely. As, soon as, went, as soon as I went up to Cahill. He says, listen, you need to get out of this. You need to get walking on it and build up the strength on it. Like, and I was kind of thinking, would that not be a bad thing? Like, yeah. But obviously, looking back on it now, I had six weeks from when I came back from Dublin toward before the operation. And like, them six weeks, like, put in like a really good bit of work trying to build up the muscle in the leg and everything. Like, and that's definitely stood me in good stead now afterwards. Um, but I suppose when you come back to that mindset thing, um, you just, you just need to kind of just, to kind of park it and just say whatever happens happened like and you just need to kind of just get at your get at your rehab straight away because it was the more work you put in now you better you're going to be when you're back like so um when got the operation and then the first few days obviously there's only limited exercises you can do you're just trying mm-hmm. to straighten it and end it and everything but um if a physio at home or ronan brennan he's he, he's super with me so he is um started with him then maybe like a week after or so like and been, been with him since like and definitely right now like definitely could tell it's it's the fittest or the strongest i've ever been like because yeah so you have that five four or five months there already where it's just totally dedicated towards the gym and just improving athletically like um not saying that everyone should do their acl but it's definitely something if you have the right mindset you'll come back way better from it like like oh, keith, yeah. keith, keith was great with me too like because anytime that he got injured he seemed to come back nearly way Stronger, better like, yeah. yeah your physique and everything like and i definitely find there last night was probably the first time i was running running on grass i was running on astro and stuff kind of nice kind of solid surface like and yeah definitely was as it, it makes a big difference like you definitely feel a lot quicker a lot sharper and everything than i did before so like in yeah. hindsight it's not, it's not a bad thing obviously you don't want to be injured but, and at that point in time as well i was going quite well and you're thinking you know build on last season how you getting player of the year build on it see if you can progress then to a higher level you have a good six months state months like you could get a move and then it's all out the window but like hopefully when i'm back now um hopefully come back way better like you know yeah oh yeah absolutely and i think like um as you say i think it's a good point you know it for me i know is i wouldn't wish the the experience the pain oh, if, if nothing else on anyone but i do think you know you have a very good mindset from what i can tell and i think um you know you can't come back bigger better stronger um but it de- it's very valuable in the sense it makes you reevaluate things um okay, and sort of good. reassess um your approach um to football to training to diet and everything um but yeah, not listen. I think that's you know it is quite funny your experience there. Um, you kind of get in this mindset of you convince yourself I'll be fine and maybe it's not yeah. as bad, and then you get that dreaded news. But um, I think a couple more months, four or five months, and fingers crossed you'll get back. Um, 
I suppose you'll be looking to go back then to Derg View. Would that be ideally the plan or are you sort of looking at maybe just a year getting back into football or what do you think? Have you had much thought about that? Rose, obviously, you'd want to get back, I suppose, to the highest level you can. Um, I was up in Santry there for testing in March and got on pretty good. The numbers are pretty good. Like, there's at the minute, there's a 19 to 20% difference in the left and the right leg, which is which is quite low for four months. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to get that under under 10% to be able to go back to playing football. Um, but I'll back up at the end of June, start of July. So if I just keep knuckling down now, you have April, May, June, another, I suppose, another three months or so. Yeah. You kind of just build up as that leg as strong as you can. And if you do get the green light to go back then, you need to kind of see, see where I'm at and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of lads, especially the, the, the surgeon that said that himself, like he says, a lot of our patients would wait 20 or 12 months, especially if you're under 21, because you kind of need that wee bit of time. Oh, you do, absolutely. The cartilage and everything to develop and get stronger and everything. So I suppose you kind of see where I'm at when I go back to the Samsung for testing at the, the eight or nine month stage um, and just kind of take it from there. Like, obviously, you want to get back to the highest level you can. Like, mm-hmm. and, um, at the minute, I'm I'm still still signed with their view. Um, just I suppose need to wait to see now what happens, um, in the summertime whenever their 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 manager Emmett Friars he's he's gone there at the minute. Ivan Sproul who's taken over That's now right, for, the, yeah. for the last couple of matches with the split and that. So different managers can come in, different opinions and stuff. So just need to wait and see now and in, in the summertime and see 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 where I'm at and kind of kind of take it from there. Like so, um. But uh, doing doing plenty of training, doing a good bit of coaching that as well in the gym and stuff at, uh, yeah. at home and that. So that's something I never really would have had the time for if I was playing too. So it's a good experience that way when you're studying sport in OIT, like, and then you're taking mm-hmm. it into a practical sense with with younger lads. Like, it's 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 great. Like, so it is. Yeah, and that's great. And I know I'm just looking at our timer here, um, which is kind of counting down, um. Listen, why don't, um, because I'd love to actually get you on again. I think there's a lot more to talk about there. Um, Why don't I just, last question, um, why don't I ask for your Mount Rushmore? Let's do four goalkeepers and maybe one honourable mention, maybe a bit of a rogue goalkeeper. No problem, right? That's that's one people's going to think I'm mad here now, but my, my hero growing up was Fraser Foster. Now, okay, that's, yeah, that's, you're fair probably enough, Celtic man. Yeah. It's uh it's it's a strange one, like like you hear you hear uh Tim chatting about Ter Stegen and that and he'd be most people's kind of heroes and he's trying yeah. with them and stuff like but mine was Fraser, like I used to think that he was just the bees knees cats pajamas, like I used to think he was class, like like some of them performances he put in against in the Champions League against Barcelona, Barcelona and that he was just yeah. literally a brick wall, like there was just no getting past them. Um Probably other parts to his game now. You wouldn't really want to be taking it yeah. too much now, but definitely on the shot stop and on the goalkeeping side of it. Um, you see, I thought that he thought he was class, like, um, and then I suppose you can't really look past Allison and Ederson, like. Okay. Like, yeah. The, like the, the two of the, the two of them are class for their distribution qualities. Like it's for I suppose any goalkeeper coming up, like they're they're the benchmark, and I suppose there's only it's only going to get people's only going to get better playing the ball with their feet, like, um, mm-hmm. it's something then. Something definitely has come into the game more and more. Even since I've started started playing when I was oh, younger, yeah, like, absolutely. Um, I think if I had the back pass rule, I think I'd be, I think I'd be in business now. How <laughs> so I would. So, um, and the fourth one, um, fourth one, Fraser, Allison, Ederson. Why don't I ask you this one, Packy Boner or Shay Given? Well, you have to pick one now. Is your fourth? Oh Jesus, um. Packies from down my neck it always exactly, now, so, yeah. so I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna annoy anyone now. Um but I was actually lucky enough I was over on trial at Derby, so I was when I was fourteen. Um I was over on trial at Derby when I was fourteen and I actually met Shay Given. Um, okay. he was kinda a wee bit instrumental in bringing me over. Um he brought me over and actually was able, was was lucky enough to meet him and that so uh, I probably have to have to go with Shay oh, there. Shit. So he 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 done me a favor. So I don't know if this favor is gonna do too much for him now. But I'll go I'll go I'll go with Shay there. So well so. There um, we are. 